Hello everyone and welcome to the 27th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how we can work with mouse events in Cocoa. So what we're going to be doing in this little application is building a small little drawing app where we can drag around and make some rectangles as we drag the mouse. Basically when we click it that will establish an origin or an anchor point for our rectangle then as we drag around our view, we can, you know, draw a rectangle basically based off those two points. So that's what uh, this application is going to be. It's a very simple example of using mouse events. And uh, I think you can expand it uh, well beyond what really is in this tutorial alone. So um, let's just go ahead and dive into this. So what we want to do here, of course, if we're going to make a, dra or a drawing application, we have to have some kind of view that we're drawing in. So we want to go ahead and create a custom view. So drag that out like so. And, and oops, go ahead and expand it like this. And there we go. Now we have our nice custom view. And of course, we need to make a class that we can work with as well. So go ahead and create an Objective-C class, subclass, and as view. And we'll call this our drawing view. And of course, create that in your project folder. So there we go, now we have our drawing view class, and we're going to go ahead and subclass our custom view here to be called drawing view. And there we go, now it's a drawing view that we have in our application. So basically, uh, what I like about this example is that it's very, very simple. There isn't much uh, to really talk about, or really much to, I shouldn't say talk about, there's lots to talk about always, but there isn't much that you really have to explain in order to create a very nice, simple drawing application in Cocoa. Because all you really need is two methods to establish where you click the mouse and where you drag the mouse. And it's it's nice, it's just very simple. So what we need to, of course, establish here for our, our rectangle are two points, the start point where we click and the end point. And we need to hold on to these different variables for the length of this program. So what we want to do is create an NS point instance variable. And then this point is just a simple point that holds x and y values. And so you can just, you know, work in a 2D space and you have a point. So we'll call one point a start point, And the other NS point we'll call end point. All right. So now we have these nice two points here. And uh, we have to, of course, figure out what we're going to do to establish these points. So. We don't need to worry about our init method there, we could just leave that alone. Um, but of course we need to worry about draw rect, because we have to draw something in this application. And of course we're going to work with a few mouse events as well. So let's just actually first work with draw rect a little bit just to establish uh, something. So we're going to have a red background in this application, and uh, that's you know basically what we're going to have. So uh, the background will just make red. So we'll say NS color. We're going to make it a red color. And we'll just set our color to be uh, red. So now that we have that, uh, again, just a re reminder from the last tutorial working with NS colors, you set up the color that you want to work with when you're drawing, and then that's the color that you work off of. So uh, now that we've set the color, everything that spawns from that will be red. So our NS rect fill, uh, we want to fill our dirty rect with the red color. And now, with this application as it is, we have a nice rect that should be red. And of course, we did not enable um, expanding the view, and I'll show you why I didn't do that in just a bit. So, um, go ahead and quit this application. And now the next point, or not the next point, but the next part, is going to be getting our points. So we want to use the two methods called mouse down to receive the click, and we want to use mouse dragged to receive the drag. So um, I'm going to show you a few of these methods here. And basically, if you just type in mouse, you'll see right away that you have a bunch of uh, responder methods that you can use to analyze mouse events. So we have, uh, I'm going to be looking at mouse down and mouse dragged, but you can understand what these other ones are. Mouse moved is when you move around in the view, and mouse up would be when you let go of the mouse. So um, those are a bunch of mouse events, and you can play around with them, uh, but for this tutorial, we don't really need them. So 
uh, go ahead and work with mouse down here. So void mouse down, and it passes in an NS event. And it, you might be wondering, well, what's an NS event? Good question, because I haven't actually talked about that yet. And basically, an NS event just represents any keyboard or mouse event that happens. So in a mouse down event, you are basically going to have something that happens where you, you hit the mouse down. That's a input event. And the event will hold information that's relative to what happened when you clicked it. So when we hit mouse down, it records, well, you know, what key did you actually mouse down? Did you do it with the right click? Did you do it with the left click? Uh, did you uh, hold the shift key when you did it? It holds all this information in an NS event, and you can extract that as well. So if you want to option click NS event right there, you can go to the class reference, and it has tons of information about receiving um, different things. And we'll be working more, uh, well, we'll work with NS events in this tutorial and in the next one as well when we get into keyboard events or keyboard stuff. So anyway, uh, with that, um, so we want to be able to retrieve in this information or in this application specifically where we click in the view. We want to know, hey, we clicked somewhere. What location did we click? So we can do this quite simply. And uh, I'm going to show you kind of the wrong way here first, which might sound weird, but um, I'm gonna, it's easier to explain, I think, if you see the wrong way first than if you see the everything combined uh, together. So anyway, let's we're just doing it the wrong way first, but just bear with. So we want to get the start point, which is, you know, kind of right here. We want to get the start point when we uh, click down on our mouse. We want to figure out, well, we clicked on the mouse, where did we click? And to do this, we can take that information from the event, and we can say, where was our location in the window? And uh, you'll see that that's actually part of the problem, is that we're taking the location in the window, not specifically in the view, but you'll see, uh, you'll be able to see why this is wrong when we actually get to play around with this application. But anyway, we're taking the start point, and we want to figure out where the point was in the view. And that's all we would really have to do for mouse down. So the next part is our mouse dragged. So we're dragging this mouse somewhere when we after we click it, and we want to figure out where that endpoint is that we're dragging around. So to do that, we just do the same thing. We say, well, the event, we want to take your location in the window. And that's good. And now the last point, or last part, is specifically that we have to tell our application that it has to draw itself. If we don't tell it to draw itself, we aren't going to be seeing any rectangle on the screen until we actually resize the window or the view itself. So uh, this isn't going to be useful if we can't actually uh, get the view to display itself. So we have to specifically tell our view, hey, you know, we've updated where we've dragged this rectangle. Make sure you now know that you have to redraw the view. So to do that, we just have to say self set your needs display to yes. So basically we're saying, we're telling ourselves, yes, you need to display yourself again. And you just pass in yes. And we talked about this a little bit in the last tutorial. So self set needs display that will basically tell our view, hey, you have to redraw yourself. So then draw rect will be called. So now the part comes where we have to actually draw the rectangle, which we're going to be using the nice class NS Bezier path. And it's, uh, I would say it's not really good for large scale drawing, uh, at least from my experience, it's kind of breaks down when you have hundreds of points and stuff that you have to draw. Uh, maybe it's just with doing draw recs really fast, but um, it does work. Uh, I mean, it does work with a lot of points, but uh, if you have to draw things rather fast, then it um, might not be your best solution. But anyway, it is actually, it's it's a relatively good class for drawing, you know, basic stuff that you move your mouse around, and I would advise it for its ease of use. So, NS Bezier path, all you have to do to do, uh, you might be wondering, well, what are we doing an NS Bezier path for? And the path will basically just uh, set up our rectangle. So we can create a path that's essentially a rectangular path, and we can tell the path that we want to fill it with whatever color we want, or whatever color we specifically set in uh, our NS color. So in this Bezier path, uh, we want a Bezier path with rect. That's the nice uh, method, class method that we can use to make an NS Bezier path. And this is an auto-released object, so we don't have to worry about the memory for it as well. So 
with that, uh, NS busy path with rect, and we just pass in some rect. So NS make rect, this is where we have to actually figure out where our start point and end points are for a rectangle. So of course, X and Y for making a rectangle is the origin. And that's just going to be wherever we click. So start point dot X and start point dot Y are going to be the values for wherever we clicked on our window. So the next part, though, would be our width and our height. And this is where, you know, you have to use a little bit of math to figure out where or how large your rectangle is. So, for example, uh, we're taking our endpoint, which, you know, is obviously going to be useful for figuring out where the width is, but it isn't the width itself. We can't just say endpoint.x, and that's not going to be the width. That would only be the width if our start point was zero. So we have to figure out the difference between our endpoint and our start point. And to do that, we just subtract the x value of our start point and our x value of our endpoint. So we can say endpoint.x minus startpoint.x, and that will subtract the two values and figure out where uh, the width is. So for example, if endpoint here is a value of 200 pixels, start point is a value of 50 pixels, uh, that's all in the coordinate system in our view. Basically, if we subtract 200 from 50, we're going to get 150 pixels, and that would be the width of our rectangle. So that's how we can properly figure out our rectangle width. And of course, uh, this works the same way for our y value. We just subtract our start point from our, from our end point, and that would give us our values. So there's one last part to this, though, is that once you create the path, you actually have to tell the path that you have to fill it. You have to say, all right, we've, I've created the path, but I have to fill it now with a color. So to do that, you can use a nice method called fill. So that just takes, you know, you get the idea. Uh, the fill method just takes an NS or Bezier path, and it will fill whatever you set the path as. So now that we have this, there's one last part to this, which is, of course, what color is our rectangle, because we set our red color here uh, to be everything. So we, we need to change our color, basically, to be something other than red. So we can say NS color blue color, and we'll just set that as our color. So there we go. We have our red color as our background, and our blue color is going to be our path, which is going to make the rectangle. So anyway, that's what we have for our drawing app here, and we can go ahead and run this. And this should appear to work quite well. So let's uh, resize this so that it's about the same size as our view. And as you can see, I drag around, and it's looking really well. It's looking like, you know, a nice drawing app here. Make my rectangles. And now the real problem comes in when we go to, uh, you know, change the size of our re re the window itself. So if I go to change the window itself, now I have another problem, which is if I go to draw now, you'll see that the rectangle is drawing itself way away from my mouse. So where does the issue lie with where I'm drawing? It seems that, you know, I got my point location, um, and it's just, it's just not working. It's just not showing me what I want here. So the reason that this doesn't work is because it's drawing relative to where you got the location in your window. So when we hit mouse down, we're saying that we want to take the location that we clicked in our window. It's not specifically saying where we took the location in our view. And so we actually have to convert the point system to the system that our view is working in. So uh, since, you know, if I move my view like this, now when I go to draw something, you realize that it's still thinking its way up there. And the reason for this is, let's say, the difference between... I don't know, let's say that the difference between here and here is about 100 pixels. It's probably not really, but let's just say it is. So if the difference between this height and this height is 100 pixels, that means, well, the location in my view would be 100 pixels when I click approximately right here. So let's say I click right here in my view, and, you know, it's about 100 pixels. That's, that's it would register that I clicked at about 100 pixels. So my start point would say, well the y value for this point is about 100 pixels up. Now, the problem with this is that when we go to write this in our view, it's saying, well, I'm just going to draw my rectangle 100 pixels up. But the problem is it's relative to the view. It's not relative to where my window was. So 
when I go to draw my rectangle, it's saying, yeah, I'll draw it 100 pixels up. That's where my start point was. But of course, that start point was, is when it goes to draw it, is relative to this red area right here, which is my view. But of course, the, the when we clicked it, we really meant 100 pixels up from our window. So how do we do this? How do we say that we really want the point to be relative to our view and not the window? And it's a pretty simple fix. So we're going to make a temporary as point. We'll call it point. And what we all we really have to change is that we have to convert the point from one view system to another because they're they're basically different coordinate systems. One, if you look at the coordinate system of the view, it's also in the coordinate system of the window, but it's they're different. They're you know their y values in this case would be different uh, start points. So uh, what we what we really need to do is tell it that you know we want it to convert the point to be relative to our view. So we can just say start point gets, and there's a very simple method we can use called convert point from view. So convert point from view uh, is pretty self-explanatory. It converts a point that we have from some view to whatever view that we're, is calling this method. So self is the view that we're in, so we're saying uh, our own view wants to convert this point from some other view. And the view that we use is our window. And we can uh, just pass in nil for this method and it knows it's going to use the window-based coordinate system. And that's, uh, it's a nice way, so you, you don't have to figure out what your view is, you can just say nil. No. And it knows to work in the window-based system. Alright, so then of course we have to do the same thing for endpoint. We just have to say that, uh, yeah, this is going to be ms point, point, and then our endpoint is going to get this point converted. So self convert point, point from view nil. And now we've actually converted the points for our start point and end point to be relative to where our view is located. So this is good in drawing applications that might not, you know, stretch with the view. So we can now test this to see that this works properly. And as you can see, we have our view out here. And you can see that uh, it's staying within where I drag the mouse in my view. And if I redraw this out here, you can see that it still stays relative to where I'm clicking. So that's good. It converts the points properly relative to where the view is located in my window. And it's not just taking the window's points and drawing uh, the same point value in my view. So that's uh, what we want. And the last thing we can do is we can even expand this view to fit the entire uh, window itself. So we could do that right in here, just say to expand all the way out there. And if we go to run this again, you'll see that now, you know, we get a full drawing application and, you know, it'll re-expand with, uh, you know, this thing. And we can just redraw like that. So there you go. That's uh, basically our drawing application that we have for uh, just a simple example. And the next tutorial we'll be working with keyboard events where we click something on the keyboard and uh, you can figure out how you can get that information as well from what keys pressed and uh, we're, we'll actually continue working with this application a little bit in that tutorial as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, many more are on the way and uh, if you haven't uh, joined me on Twitter or Google Plus yet, uh, please do that. We had our first Google Plus Hangout there a little while ago and I'm hoping to have another one where we might even have some giveaways. So, you know, uh, stick around for uh, different information updates as well. And I am actually working on getting uh, source code stuff ready. And I might do that through some type of blog or something uh, where I have links for different things like that. But um, anyway, that's just some random stuff that I'd throw in. But anyway, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. And I'll see you in lesson 28.